Good morning. Morning, everybody. I haven't been with you in a, been off and on the past couple of weeks, but I haven't taught in a couple of weeks. But uh, it's good to be here today. It's uh, rainy, rainy January here in Ohio. And uh, we are in Job chapter 26. And 
it's a it's a shorter chapter, but not as short as the one that was yesterday. That's <laughs> for sure. But uh, it's fourteen verses, and uh, Job continues his back and forth between him and his his uh, frenemies, um, people that know him very well, people that are close to his heart. And people who know many things about God, but don't deeply know God's heart and don't know how to truly be present with someone who's suffering. And of course, this whole book is about the problem of suffering that we face. You know, as we were talking before the recording came on, we know we have friends and loved ones that are stricken with various maladies. And, and if each of us lives long enough, we'll probably battle something at some point along the way. And uh, how do we relate to these people that we love? Um, you know, we could, we can in love, if it's truly done in love and not in a spirit of accusation, uh, look at ways that their life has contributed to their problem. And oftentimes there is a, a spiritual source involved very often. That's involved as well. Uh, Job is about being being quick to realize that we don't understand everything, and that there is a, a God, that God is governing the universe, and that He's involved intimately in our lives. And uh, sometimes we don't know; we just don't know all the answers to everything. And so, I think that's a, that's a good message for us as we're trying to be spiritual detectives. And we have to be very careful because a surgeon is very careful when they do surgery. And so we who would presume to be spiritual surgeons, oftentimes without much training even, need to be very careful when we take that, that, uh, that knife to people's lives, that knife of discernment, that knife of our presumed wisdom and our, our knowledge that we've gotten somewhere. And so anyway, every time I, I read Job, I'm, uh, I'm made aware of these things and sometimes even convicted of these things of even times in the past where perhaps I've was spoke too harshly with somebody or was not careful in my words or judgmental or uh, outright just blamed them for all their <laughs> so it is it's it's just telling because that that's basically what why I see as a major theme in the book. so let's 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 read because again, uh, verse uh, chapter twenty six is is Job's uh, response to uh, Bildad in particular, which was the very short six verses of chapter twenty five. So, Father, I do, I don't have a lot of things that I feel that are jumping out of me in the natural, Lord. When I when I read this chapter, uh, Father, I'm going to read some some commentary insights. I guess I did sort of. Say a few things, Lord, and I pray that they'll be a blessing uh, if they're blessable. And uh, we ask that you be present, continue to be present in our fellowship, continue to be present in our reading as we continue to try to grapple with this, this life of ours. And as we ultimately surrender it to you, uh, in Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. And I really think that's at the heart of one of the hard the main messages as well as we've talked about is that, you know, life is really surrender to God in every, every way, every aspect, every day. It's not about just only going to heaven when you die. Obviously that's quite important, but it's about truly knowing God and to know God is to surrender to him. And, and the things that we don't understand, it's not about understanding God. Like we could just like, dissect him like we could have him all figured out he is so far beyond our imaginations he is in, in many ways although he's revealed himself to us through his revelation on the one hand we has revealed and we can know so much about him we know his character and who his, his heart is that he is a god who's entered into our history so we do know god and we can know him but in other ways he is he is far beyond our understanding because we are his creatures. Uh, you know, we are his creatures that he's elevated to the status of sons and daughters for those of us who put our faith in the son, Jesus Christ. But in some ways he is inconceivable. He is invisible. He's incomprehensible and yet eternally the same. Those are the lines of an ancient prayer service, you know, 
that the early Christians would would worship to. And so, and I think that's that's the one of the major themes that God is God is God and we are not. And so we worship a God who, who put the stars in the sky. And I believe even in his presence, we'll get a vision of him, but I think that vision of him will will never be exhausted. That's that's, that's my that's my thought. Uh, it's the thought of, of many people who've gone before me. Um, so anyway, we'll we'll continue here. So we'll continue by actually starting. <laughs> but Joe <laughs> answered and said, again, he's answering a uh, Bill Dad. But Job answered and said, how hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that has no strength? Hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? And, and how hast thou plenteously declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words? And to whose spirit came from thee? We'll just stop there for a minute. He's He's basically say, you know, he's like, look, throughout, he's like, look, you are a man just like me. You know, did you bring the world into existence? Did you, what have you really done that I, and some that I haven't done? And more, he's kind of to the point that, you know, Job has throughout said, look, really, you are my friends, but if anything, I've been your counselor. You know, so there is this sense of they're not really respecting Job. You know, they're, their accusations are without warrant. You know, you sh we should be quick to pick out the, you know, the the plank that's in our own eye. Jesus says, then it'll be more clearly to see the little splinter that is in someone else's. Because he says, how hast thou helped him that is without power? Amen. And so, you know, what what is he spending his life doing? But just he's just philosophizing, you know, is he like jobless? So he just spends all his time on the internet, you know, sort of think, think, you know, theological arguments and reasons for other people's problems, you know, how is he, as they say, being the change in the world that God has made? How has still helped him that is without power? You know, well, guess what? Job right now is without power. And Job's just being honest and saying, look, you're not really helping. me. You're just beating me up all day long. You're not helping me. You have lots of words. You, wow, you really you've got a you know a, a bachelor's in rhetoric, but you're you're not you're not bringing me closer to my God here with my blame with this blame. And so you know if you keep doing the same thing and it's not yielding results, you got to try something else. How hast thou helped him that is without power? And so we should take that to heed, you know, and as we're interacting with others and as we're trying different things in our life you know is it are we getting any results you know what's what's going on here and um also you know uh many of us relate to god mostly in our in our in our thought life but we don't actually go out and try to to love other people you know we're supposed to love the lord our god with all of our heart mind soul and strength that means our whole person and many people just want to so sometimes even it, it can lead to making like an idol out of God, <laughs> even because we we have just our what ends up being idolatrous opinions sometimes about him because we're not we're not loving him with all of our heart, mind, soul and strength. We're not loving our neighbor as ourself. You know, the greatest of these is love. And so anyway, I, yeah. So how savest thou the arm that has no strength? And again, that's that's connected to the the first the first verse the first part of, of verse two. So two A and two B, as it were, they're uh, very similar. How are you helping those without power, and how are you saving uh, those that have no strength? And so, um, how hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? And so, yeah, Job is like, look, I'm, you know, I'm I'm trying to understand here. I'm trying to understand. There's things I don't understand. Job say it. It's I don't believe what's happened to me is because of my my personal sin, you know. And again, this is written, you know, so that the Jew will understand that not every bad thing that happens is the result 
of people's personal sin. Sometimes there are forces that we don't understand. We know from the book of Job that these bad things were happening because of the Satan. You know, mm -hmm. a guy who fell from heaven, you know, and tricked tricked man and woman and man and women sinned by by disobeying God and 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 so the role that men and women had in the earth of being the caretakers of this world, of uh, being the, the the priests of this world in in a, in a real sense. That's what they are in the Garden of Eden. Well, guess what? They they gave away their birthright, just you know, like Jacob and Esau. You know, um, Esau gave away his birthright. You know, well, Adam and Eve, in some sense, gave away their birthright and caretaking for this world. And that's how sin and sickness and death entered in this world. And Job lives before the cross. And so, um, so yeah, so Job's trying to figure out what's going on. And, and this book is for, for us and for the, the ancient Jew to know that some things are, are in this world because there are spiritual forces in the world. And we are we we are all born into a broken world. Let's not forget that. There are people that are born with birth defects, mm. terrible maladies from birth. And there are people born with demons <laughs> from birth. You know like that's where most don't get in there. You know, and so we enter this world. You know, yes, we're made in the image and likeness of God. Yes, it's there, but there's also a lot of brokenness, and so. Be careful, you know, you know, everyone's facing a great battle and we don't know what that is. We don't know. And so, and how hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? So in other words, he's like, you're just not doing a very good job diagnosing the, the problem fully. And uh, to whom hast thou uttered these words and whose spirit came from thee? And so, you know, look, you're not the source source of all things you know like pastor charlie oftentimes says you know you know i'm not all that in a bag of chips or whatever and he realizes you know we have to realize who we are you know and so we are like dust you know we in, in, in a sense you know we're from the earth we will return to the earth and so and there's there's room that all of us should be humble and just realize that be still that and know that there is a god and and again and Job's friends did the best when they just came in sackcloth and sat with them. And um, so dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. Um, and again, this this is the uh, notions, the afterlife that they had. Hell is naked before him and destruction hath no covering. And so before God, you know, hell itself is 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 naked um so i see if there's anything in the, the commentary specifically on like dead things are formed under the waters and the habitats thereof that sounds um uh, curious to me like what, like what is that hmm. um uh here in verses 5 through 14 the commentary says job alludes to some obvious areas of knowledge that are open before god but concealed from human perspective in order to warn his friends against their continued presumption that they know God's purposes and Job's disastrous circumstances. So again, these are ways of knowing and figures of, of understanding that they would be very intimate with that, that basically Job was saying, look, you don't, you don't know as much as you think, you know. <laughs> and so he stretches out the North over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing and so this is allusions to god's power and his 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 might and so um and so again things are clearly known to god but are hidden from our full understanding um the state or realm of the dead is not visible to humanity that would be like under the waters shale and abaddon but is naked and has no uh, covering again this I idea of the water being under underneath i mean we have this notion in, in genesis that before even the the flood that there are waters beneath and that the, there was a mist that would erupt and water the land before the rain came 
So these notions are very, maybe that's a similar notion here of there kind of being water and shale. And so this is very, very, we know that Job, some of surmises the most ancient literature, perhaps in many ways, at least at least some of the ideas of its origin. So I, I don't know, but it's pretty old. <laughs> it's pretty old. And so um, he bindeth up the waters in his thick clouds and the cloud is not rent under him. So obviously here is water, you know, from where we know it is today, um, and, uh, you know, coming up in the atmosphere and the clouds being formed. He holdeth back the face of his throne and spreadeth his cloud upon it. Again, these, these are notions of looking at God's sovereignty, his power. He, he is so powerful that we don't understand him fully. And we can never comprehend him deeply. And that's in part why he's worthy of being worshipped. Because he's God. Yeah. By definition, he's God. If we could understand him fully, he could be some kind of idol that we think that we could control. But we could, we, could, we can't do that. <laughs> we are the creature, not the creator. Yeah. Um, he hath compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. And uh, wow, just again, he's 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 incredible. He's incredible that he he upholds all the earth within his power. You know that of his son, the word Christ, who's true God, that he fills all things. Jesus fills all in all. You know, Jesus ultimately, though he is created as a man, and although properly understood, he is the word who proceeds from the Father. That's that's ancient Christian theology. Which is rooted in the Bible um, that we that we all have all inherited. Uh, nonetheless, Christ fills all in all. So I mean, he's so Christ is God. He fills all in everything in every way, and so not just some mere created being, which was an ancient heresy that's still very alive today. Um, the pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his reproof. So it's like God is holding the world together with his power continuously. So now he didn't just create and then let everything go like a distant watchmaker. Like he, he holds all things continually in his power, in his sight, in his right hand. And, uh, he divided the sea with his power and his understanding. He smiteth through the proud. So that's amazing. Like he... He separated the, as we know, the waters from the waters and the land from the sea by his power. And then we would know by his understanding, he smited through the proud that we we should not presume to, to know everything. We should not presume to have the answer to, to everyone. We, we, we're going to have to know that, look, we're going to be counselors to people. We're going to offer some knowledge, but but we should fast and pray the way Job's friends did. That should be our main response. And then when we do offer something to them, we're going to have to know that ultimately God is the one that's going to have to reveal himself to them and their Job situation. Because that's what God did with Job. He showed up for him, but he had to go through his struggle first. Job had to go through his, his difficulty. He had to take up his cross in a sense. And so... But we're going to have to realize as recipients that we can't always go to the man of God. We should, but the man of God is not God. The man of God is just a fellow servant, just like we are. The man yeah. of God has his own problems and his own responsibilities. And yes, God can use that man in powerful ways, but God's going to decide how he's going to use that man of God and when and if he's going to use that man of God in your life because at the end of the day it's all about him capital h him <laughs> so and at the end of the book we're going to see we're going to see him and that's our the goal of our life is to offer our lives and each other to him so that he will be all in all who fills everything in every way and then I think that's an example for us as we're reading this book and as we're struggling, going through issues. The, the Job, the book of Job is about suffering that ultimately we have to look to him. And he's the one that's going to come through. 
he's the one that we look to. And all of our sleepless nights and all the pains in our bodies and all the problems that we have with our kids and with our friends that we thought were friends sometimes even, yes, we're going to have to look to him. So he divided the sea with his power and by his understanding he smiteth through the proud. By his spirit he hath garnished the heaven. His hand hath formed a crooked serpent. Again, this, this serpent, you know, Leviathan, and and um, he's, he's formed everything. He's formed everything. The things the Jews didn't understand that we know elsewhere in the Bible are representatives of, of demon principalities, but were also simultaneously by the ancients believed to be actual beasts, you know, that lived in the sea and in different parts of the land. And uh, we don't know to what extent some of these ancient things, you know, I, I don't know you know, archaeologists, but maybe some things died off to some extent. I I don't know. I don't know. But it, anyway, God's created everything, even the things that they, all the things that they were afraid of, you know, and he created them all. All the things that they, they thought, the ancient Jew thought they were powerless against because they were too mighty. You know, God, God is mightier than all of them. He created everything. And um, lo, these are parts of his ways but how little a portion is heard of him but the thunder of his power who could understand and again you know look we you know job's like we don't understand fully i you know job was i don't believe job was you know job was pre torah he I, I don't think he was a jew you know he's pre law of moses he's pre torah um you know, it's like, well, look, what do we, you know, he didn't sit around, you know, just reading Torah all day. You know, he had dreams and visions. He had an intimate knowledge of, of Yahweh. You know, there are seers and there are prophets, you know, that sort of thing. But he's like, look, there, we only know so much. We, Job too saw through a glass dim. But someday even we will see him as he trembles. So in the meantime, let us go through this life with humility, looking looking up, you know, looking up to God, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And let's run this race before us and let's encourage each other daily while it's still called today. And um, let's fight this fight together. And if, if we could, you know, pull out the plank from somebody, from our own eye and in order to see more clearly, let's do it. You know, we are called to, speak truth into each other's life, but to do so with love. And let's do it in such a way that we draw attention to him, capital H-M, and not to ourselves. Not to our own wisdom, not to our own knowledge, but let's always try to bring people to Jesus, Amen. people to his Father. We're, we're, our, our purpose is to be empowered by the Spirit of God to bring people to Jesus, who brings people to his Father and ours. And so that's what I have. And um, God bless you guys. Amen. The spirit leaves the body and I stand before the throne. The angels sing songs to the king as I'm asked if I can show. One good thing that I have done, a reason I should be allowed to stay. All I can say is Jesus, the blood of Jesus, nothing. I've got no other answer and that one word is my plea. My hope it rests on nothing less than the one who died for me.
the mercy of a Savior and His cleansing blood has set this sinner free. Oh, glory be, Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Just reminds me of 